how do you feel about this old timers label? Well, it was, you know, it's a little bit weird, especially, you know, okay, when you're 20 and you hear the word old timers and you, and you see these old guys playing, you go, yeah, you know, that looks like old timers to me. But when you're, uh, well, the old timers cut off, the official cut off is 35. If you're 35 years old, you can, you're an old timer. You can play old timers. And you think of one of these old bearded farts on, on an old Western movie, you know, with a dented frying pan and a mule kind of thing. And that's an old timer. Hey, old timer. But anyway, uh, but when you're my age, 53, and you, and you see a 35 year old, he looks like a kid. And to think of him as an old timer, that's, that's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, I, I've, I've officially, you know, gotten used to my old timer moniker and I'm comfortable with it. Every season seems to be your one. Well, I just, this year's maybe is the year I'm going to, what, what's the expression? Hang up the skates? Yeah, hang them up, yeah. Hang them up. Yeah. Hang them up. Yeah. <laughs> you can look at it, hockey is a bad habit, I guess, you know, playing old timers because it, uh, you can look at it in lots of ways, and one of them is as a bad habit, and like any bad habit, it's hard to break this bad habit. And it gets, it doesn't get any easier, even though like one shoulder doesn't work, and you're, and you have a chronic ankle, bad ankle, and uh, and makes you drink too much beer with the boys after the game, and all sorts of reasons to quit. But mostly your body just hurts too much, and, and also you're getting lousier and lousier, you're scoring way fewer goals, and uh, I don't know, but I'm playing again, still playing. I strapped them on again this year, and uh, I probably will next year. No, I don't know what it is. It's uh, Well, you know, I mean, lots of people have probably some pretty highfalutin intelligent ideas about what it is, and maybe the most obvious one is that, well, that, that childish joy, that childish, you know, instinct, that involuntary shout uh, that we don't get to experience too much in our you know structured lives how important is the beer the beer is vital <laughs> <laughs> if you have a choice between uh beer or the puck uh, uh you could probably use a bottle to shoot into the yeah. net, but you can't drink a puck well the thing with old timers hockey you don't have to choose you, you get both <laughs> you know you don't have that maybe that's why we play you don't have to choose it also gives you guilt-free beer after you know you you know you've worked out real hard and you deserve to you know, we have to quench our thirst here. You know, boy, this is desperate. So the medical thing, you do. Really. Yeah, that's right. You have to replenish those fluids real fast, <laughs> real often. It's not that. Uh, it's not that a bunch of us. Uh, it's not that ev everybody pounds back a dozen beer after the game. It's nothing like that at all. Most guys probably have one or two. You know, and there's a there's a handful of guys that don't have any. You know, some of them for very good reasons. You know, they're no longer drinking. Some just would rather have a seven up. But Some uh, of them uh, prefer to smoke something. Uh, possibly, yeah, have a little bowl for the road. And some of them, I happen to know, also enjoy a, a pre-game bowl. <laughs> and, and have a little, you know, they're playing a little different game than the rest of us out there. But buzz before the buzzer. That's right, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, the guys you play with, um, mm -hmm. I guess for some reason I thought blue collar, which is yeah. probably my ignorance. Yeah. But uh, you were playing with... Bankers and ministers? Ah, all sorts. You know, yeah. Most teams, you can find uh, quite a mix. Like so sometimes socioeconomic groups find themselves in the same room. You know, like sometimes they're company teams. You know, often it'll start that way. Or else groups of friends have been playing since they were kids. You know, and they, they might tend to be in the same, you know, mix, say blue collar mix or something like that. But I'd say most teams are, uh, you know, quite a mix of, of um, all backgrounds, all occupations. You know, we had farmers on the team. We had uh, two professors. We had a, a visual art, a, a, an oil, a guy who made his living, he was a visual artist, so he painted, he's a painter, you know. And we had, uh, you know, uh, executives, and we had um, clerks, and we had, we had a, um, a provincial court judge on the team. And you still have that, you still like scoring. I mean, you still have that, yeah. that you want to win. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, it's funny. It's that mindless kid thing. It's, I think it's even more savage than that. It's an animal, you know. You get the puck, and you, your mind shuts off, and you just go with it. You just skate as, you know. It's, in, it's in, instinct, I guess. And all you want to do is put that puck in that net. Or maybe make a pass, which feels, you know, when you get a bit more genteel and older and all that stuff, uh, you realize that a, a nice pass to a buddy feels pretty much as good. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a pure joy, and uh, I hope to last a few more years still. 
<laughs> well, good luck. I hope you keep playing for a long time. Well, thanks very much. The book is Midnight Hockey, all about beer, the boys, and the real Canadian game. I've been speaking with the author Bill Gaston and Midnight Hockey, published by Doubleday Canada.